Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh To carry on with the general embryology lectures I'm gonna cover in this presentation the development of the fetal membranes I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, Professor and Head of Anatomy Department at Mansoura University, Egypt The fetal membranes are the coverings and the cavities that wrap around the developing embryo and protect it during its development. These are the amnion, the chorion, the yolk sac, and the elantois. First, let's see how the extra embryonic cavities develop. If we look at this uh, sample picture, this is the endometrium of the uterus. The outer trophoblastic layer is formed of two layers, a cytotrophoblast and syncytio trophoblast. And the inner cell mass is formed of two layers, epiplast and hypoplast. Near the hypoplast, there is a cavity uh, that develops that is uh, important for transmission of the nutrition to the inner cell mass. It is the plastoceal. Then here, implantation uh, took place. We can see another cavity develops inside the epiblastic cells to provide it with its nutrition. This is the beginning of formation of the amniotic cavity. With completion of the implantation, we can see uh, the beginning of the appearance of a membrane that lines the hypoplastic layer. This is the Husserl's membrane which transform now the plastocyl into what is called primary yolk sac. And if we look at the amniotic cavity, it is lined by amnioplasts. In this stage, a layer uh, of mesoderm develops between the trophoplast and the user membrane. It is called the extra embryonic mesoderm. Since it lies outside the inner cell mass, it is called extra embryonic mesoderm. Later on, cavities appear in the extra embryonic mesoderm. These cavities will coalesce together and form a large cavity. This is the extra embryonic coelom. And the extra embryonic coelom will split the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers. A layer that lines the trophoblast and also uh, covers the amniotic cavity uh, this is the somatic layer of extra embryonic mesoderm and a layer that covers uh, the yolk sac this is the splanchnic layer of extra embryonic mesoderm now the primary yolk sac will change its name into secondary yolk sac so you can see that we have three cavities that lie outside the embryo the amniotic cavity lies dorsal to the embryonic disc. Secondary yolk sac lies ventral and the extra embryonic coelom is the outermost one. To start first with the amnion, this is the epiplastic cells and this is the trophoplastic cell or cytotrophoplast. So the amnion first appears between the epiplast and the trophoplast as a transparent membrane that's filled with amniotic fluid. Later on, it will be lined from uh, inside by a layer of cells called amnioplastic cells. In this stage, the extra embryonic mesoderm forms. Then, small cavities appear in the extra embryonic mesoderm that coalesce together and form a single cavity. This cavity will split the extra embryonic mesoderm into two layers, somatic layer and splanchnic layer. Then, in the fourth week of development, folding uh, takes place. And if you remember that folding occurs into two directions, in craniocaudal direction and also in lateral direction. So this is a transverse section in the embryo. You can see the trilaminar embryonic disc now ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm and the two cavities amniotic cavity and yolk sac cavity and both are covered by extra embryonic and mesoderm the one that covers the amnion is the somatic layer and the one that covers the 
yolk sac is the splanchnic layer of extra embryonic mesoderm. With lateral folding, uh, the amnion expands and grows more and more, and its sides or edges try to approximate each other till the edges fuse with each other, and now the amniotic cavity completely surrounds the developing embryo. So you can see that uh, the amnion is like a balloon made of transparent membrane filled with uh, fluid that surrounds the embryo completely and also covers the umbilical cord and the embryo will be suspended inside it. The, this fluid is called the amniotic fluid. It is a clear, slightly yellowish fluid about one liter. It comes from the oozing of uh, the fluid from the vessels of the placenta uh, as a secretion from the amnioplasts that lines uh, the amniotic cavity and in the second half of pregnancy it is mainly made by uh, the fetal urine. The functions uh, of the amnion first it protects the baby from infections that may ascend upward in the female genital tract also from external trauma so it acts uh, as a cushion that surrounds uh, the embryo and protects it from uh, shaking and trauma also it helps um, to maintain a constant temperature around the embryo during its development so it keeps them warm it gives enough room around the baby so it allows its normal growth or otherwise um, there will be adhesions and asymmetric growth of the baby also it allows movements uh, of the baby and this helps in the development of the musculoskeletal system also it prevents adhesions of different parts of the embryo at the time of birth the amniotic membrane ruptures and the fluid pass downward and wash the birth canal prior to birth. So what are the anomalies of the amniotic fluid? We have what is called oligohydramnus. In this case, the amount of uh, the amniotic fluid is less than half a liter and this is due to decrease in its production as in cases of urinary system anomaly like a genesis of the kidney this results in fetal anomalies and adhesions you can see in this picture puffiness of the eyes of the baby and compression of his nose as if he was pressing his nose against a glass also you can see uh, abnormal development of the uh, limbs the ankle and uh, wrist because of the lack of the room around the baby to develop, grow, and move. On the other hand, we have a case called polyhydramnus, when the amount of the amnion is more than 2 liters. This results from decrease in the circulation or the absorption of the amniotic fluid, as in some cases of uh, abnormality in the gastrointestinal tract development. You can see in this picture the, that the esophagus, uh, the upper part of the esophagus, ends as a blind pouch. So whenever the baby tries to swallow uh, the amniotic fluid, it will be spilled back. It will not go into his system and be absorbed. And also in uh, some cases of central nervous system anomaly, as in this case, which is called anencephaly. The baby develops only the brain stem and the spinal cord and the brain is not present. Polyhydramnus can affect both the mother and the baby. For the mother, it leads to mother discomfort. And for the baby, because of there is much more space for the baby to move inside, uh, so the umbilical cord may develop two knots. The second membrane we'll talk about is the chorion. Uh, the chorion or the chorionic plate is formed of the trophoblast 
and the somatic layer of the extra embryonic mesoderm and it is the outermost covering of the embryo it includes uh, both the embryo and also the other membranes like the amnion and the yolk sac and the allantois at first uh, the chorion develops extensions or finger like uh, process it's called chorionic villi it covers the sac completely the villi over the decidua capsularis degenerate and form a smooth layer called chorion leaf while the villi over the decidua pisalis will form the chorion frondosum that will share in the formation of the fetal side of the placenta later on the amniotic cavity grows more and more as a result of folding on the expense of the chorionic cavity that lead to its obliteration later on for the chorionic villi we have three types of it or three stages in its uh, development first the primary stem villus it's formed of uh, cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast so this is the cytotrophoblast form the inner core and surrounded by the syncytio trophoblast the secondary stem villus develops when the extra embryonic mesoderm appear so it is formed of a core of extra embryonic mesoderm surrounded by cytotrophoblast and we have the syncytio trophoblast at the out Side. Then we have the tertiary stem villus. It develops when the extra embryonic mesoderm differentiate into connective tissue and the blood vessels. So we can see the extra embryonic mesoderm surrounded by the cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast, and you can see that inside the extra embryonic mesoderm the blood vessels develop. Then we have the yolk sac and let's see how it develops. Um, let's revise this picture again. Here you can see two cavities. The amniotic cavity develops uh, dorsal to the epiplast and we have the plastocele lies ventral to the hypoplastic layer. But when the Husserl membrane starts to uh, develop from the edges of the hypoplast, the plastocele will change its name into primary yolk sac then uh, the extra embryonic mesoderm is formed here and cavities appear within this extra embryonic mesoderm that will coalesce together and form the extra embryonic coelom the extra embryonic coelom will split the extra embryonic mesoderm into somatic layer and splanchnic layer you can see that the splanchnic layer surrounds the primary yolk sac and it will change its name now into secondary yolk sac. Then the yolk sac is also affected by folding of the embryo that takes place in the fourth week of development. Remember that the amnion grows and expands. In the same time, the yolk sac gets smaller. So part of the yolk sac will be trapped inside the body of the embryo and form the primitive gut. The rest of the yolk uh, sac will lie outside the embryo. We call it the definitive yolk sac. And both the primitive gut and the definitive yolk sac will be connected by a duct we call it the vitello intestinal duct with development the vitello intestinal duct elongates and 
the definitive yolk sac gets smaller and smaller so you can see that uh, the part of the yolk sac that already entered inside the embryo will form the gastrointestinal tract the vitellointestinal duct will pass inside the umbilical cord and the definitive yolk sac will lie outside uh, the embryo near the placenta so what is the function of the uh, yolk sac it facilitates the transfer of nutrients from the developing trophoblast to the embryo. It is also the center of blood formation in early embryonic life. It forms part of the digestive tube. And it is the source of the primordial germ cells that will later on share in the formation of the gonads. Finally, I'll talk about the allantois. Uh, the allantois is a small diverticulum or small extension that projects from the caudal end of the yolk sac into the connecting stalk. After folding, the allantois and the connecting stalk uh, move into the ventral uh, aspect of the embryo. And in the same time, a sac develops as a result of movement of the allantois ventrally, we call it the cloaca. And this cloaca or this sac ends at a membrane called the cloacal membrane. So in summary, the allantois is a small diverticulum that extends from the caudal end of the secondary yolk sac into the connecting stalk. It is the structural base for formation of the umbilical cord. It will form a part of uh, the urinary bladder and the blood vessels developed around the allantois will form later on the umbilical vessels. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share.